Good evening, everyone. Some of you have requested some additional help with specifically identifying the null and the alternative hypothesis on your hypothesis testing for one group. This also applies to two groups. I'm not going to be going over setting up the entire problem, but I will be going over how to identify HO and H1. Remember, HO is the null hypothesis. H1 is the alternative hypothesis. Now, what makes this difficult is the wording. It all comes from the wording of the problem, okay? You have to get it from the way the problem is worded. There's no calculation in this. So the null hypothesis, as we can see on the screen here, is the neutral non-controversial statement about a population. It often represents no difference. When you write the null hypothesis, you always have some form of an equal sign, okay? As you can see on the next line here, equal, greater than equal, or less than equal, okay? So if you go back to the keywords on the slides. This is why she gave you these key phrases at the beginning. These key phrases correspond to the symbols that you see on top. So greater than can be signified by any of these words, less than by any of these, equal by any of these and so forth, okay? What I'm going to point out here, the first thing that I'm gonna point out is if you see a phrase that's related to greater than or equal to, this is H1. Because again, there's no equal sign in this symbol, it's greater than. So if you're looking at a statement like this, it's an H1 statement. If you have less than, this is an H1 statement, okay? Um, if you have an equal to, this is an HO statement, okay? This is HO here. So H1, H1, HO, okay? Now, moving to the next slide. Let me erase my drawings here. Moving to the next slide that we have. Here, okay. Um, here we have less than equal to, because it has an equal to, this is an HO statement, okay? So this is going to be the following. This is going to be HO. This is going to be HO. And anything here, in the third column is going to be H1. Okay, now this doesn't exhaust all of the phrases that are possible, but it has quite a bit of the phrases that you see and the ones that she's the most used to. I'm going to start by selecting one example from section 8.3, and then I'm going to show you some problems from the review exercises that you haven't seen before. And we're gonna take some time to practice reading some of these problems so you can pick up on what we're talking about. So let me now clear all these drawings and I'm going to share the screen at this time. Chances are you've probably already done this problem. I'm not going to do anything but set up the hypothesis test here. A survey claims, okay. Now we may or may not be testing this claim, so be careful. This 
is a signal though that this is coming up that the average cost we need that of a hotel room is is $69.21 a researcher selects a sample of 30 hotel rooms so this is my sample size and finds the average cost So this is the average cost for this 30 to be 68.43. Now, sometimes what happens, this is pretty straightforward, okay? But sometimes what happens is people aren't really sure, I have two averages, which one should I use, okay? When you set up the hypothesis test, always, 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 we have HL, we have H1. And you always want to put population parameters in here, folks. Never sample statistics. So we're testing an average. They told us twice, okay? Um, so we're testing an average here. That means we're gonna have mu here. I'm gonna use an uppercase U because Zoom doesn't allow me to use Greek letters. now. It says it is 69.21. So if you go back to the slides, and if you look for, the word is, is equal to, or is the same as, is the same as, okay? is by itself means equal to. So that means we're dealing, if you remember what I said, this is an equal sign. So this deals with HO. So in this case, you're going to have this. We're going to have new equals. Now, we want the one that deals with the population. The average cost of a hotel room is $69.21. That's any hotel room that the researcher happens to be looking at. So here, we're going to say this. This is $69.21. Now the, the opposite to that is going to be not equal to. Whenever you have a hypothesis test, okay, we have three types of hypothesis tests, and I'm going to show you that, and I'm going to show you a trick, but this is not equal to, and then you're going to have 6921 here, okay? Now, I purposely chose this one because it is fairly clear and straightforward, but the principles are the same. You look for the language. If you need to, you look at the list of common phrases and you match whatever statement they're giving you to the statement here, either HO or H1. Sometimes they give you H1. We'll do some more so you can see that, but it says the standard deviation of the population is 372 at alpha equals 0.05 test the claim. What is the claim? The claim is that the average cost is 69.21. So this becomes the claim here. And this becomes a two-tailed test. Now, let me point out something else that happens here. Um, one other thing that I want to point out from the slides in um, this 8.1 section. Okay, so this is an example of how this would be set up. Okay, so let me show you this. Let me go back to the slides. Once you set up your statements, 
then you have one of these three is situations. Now we don't have to have mu here. We do in the example that I just gave you because we're testing a mean. If we were testing a proportion, we would have a P here instead of mu. If we had a variance here, we would be testing sigma squared instead of mu. This doesn't matter. This K is whatever they give you in the problem. However, you have one of these three versions. You have a two-tailed test, a right-tailed test, or a left-tailed test, okay? Again, depending on the language in the problem, the direction of your test is always determined by what H1 does, okay? Now, I said I was gonna show you something about this and I will. In mathematics and statistics is no exception, we only have three relationships between any two quantities, okay? Any one of which can be true at any given time. They're not going to be true all at the same time. Either we have a situation like this. We have one, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some examples. One is less than five. This is less than. This says one is less than five, okay? Or we can say five is greater than one. Now, where am I going with this? Well, hang in there and I'll tell you. Five is greater than one. Now, we have less than, we have greater than, or we have equal to three eight, or four. Let's do four. Four is equal to three plus one, for example. Okay, that's equal to. Now, we have one of those three relationships. When you write hypotheses, you have to include between the HO and H1, okay? Between HO and H1 collectively, all three possibilities should be stated. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. Let me come back to the slides. Remember, less than, greater than, or equal to. Let me show you something here. Let me go back to this slide where she shows you the relationship. So if you go, we're going to come back to the two-tail test. Give me a minute with that. Let's do the right-tail test first. Now, if I say, okay, if you can see where I'm going with this, this is what we're doing. Remember that the equal sign is always on the null hypothesis. So in a right tail test, because the direction of our test is determined by H1, this is a right tail test. So my arrow is pointing to the right. This is mu is greater than, this is pointing to the right, so it's a right tail. This is greater than. Remember that between the two, you have to have all three relationships that I just showed you. So if this is greater than here, then you have to have the other two symbols, less than and equal to, less than or equal to. They're both part of the puzzle. So once you decide this, the other one has to contain the other two. The H1 always gives you your direction, okay? Let's look at the left tail test. I'm gonna come back to the two tail test in a minute. Let's look at the left tail test, okay? Left tail test points to the left, hence left tail, mu less than K. Now, this is less than. The null has to contain the other two, greater than, equal to. Null always contains equal to. 
of some kind, okay? Greater than or equal to. Now, why did I come back to this? Sometimes students say, well, wait a minute. This doesn't contain all three. Yes, it does. It's hiding, okay? H O mu is equal to K. So it contains equal, right? Now, this says it's not equal to it. It's not equal. So if it's not equal, what is it? This is telling me what it's not. What is it then? Well, it's either less than or greater. It could be one of those two. But instead of writing, instead of writing this symbol, um, hang on, give me a second. Instead of writing this, oops. Instead of writing less than greater than, we write not equal to. Now, interestingly, if you have a computer science background or if you've done any programming or anything like that, you'll know that we don't have a symbol and we do use this. So you may have seen that in a very specific context, but that's, that's one of the meanings of this. It's not the only meaning. There are other meanings in mathematics for this, but that's kind of a way to remember. If it's not equal to it, it's either less than or greater than. So it's hiding in here, okay? That's just some mechanical things to consider. I did want to show you one other thing for some of you who may struggle with this, because every semester we have some, some um, people who ask about this. So I wanted to point this out. There's a symbol. Here's another symbol. Sometimes people don't know which one this is. So if I put a number over here, now if I put a number over here and you assume that this is a true statement, you can probably read this. Um, but if you have trouble knowing which way to put it, okay? We've all heard about the alligator in the Pac-Man. This is an open mouth. The alligator's hungry. He wants to eat the bigger number, right? So the mouth is facing what's larger. Now that works for some people, doesn't work for some other people. So I'm gonna offer you another way to do this. I want you to consider the symbol for a minute. I'm going to erase the numbers for now. And I'm gonna show you this. So here we have this, okay? Notice that on this side where the mouth would be, I have two dots. I have two dots, one on each side of the symbol. And on the other side where the point is, I have one dot. Pretty straightforward. Well, it turns out that we know that one is less than two or two is larger than one, however you wanna look at it. So if you forget which way the symbol goes and the open mouth situation doesn't work for you, then the side with two dots, the side with two dots should face the number that's larger. So you have smaller over here, you have larger over here. You have larger over here, if it's facing the other way, and smaller over here. And that just depends on what you're reading when you read it. So one dot is less than two dots. So you would write something like this. A 
except I have it going the wrong way. My apologies, um, because I was going to do something different. There's an example of that. This says six, there's one dot. So six must be smaller than 10. 10 has two dots. So six is smaller than 10. Here, you'd write the same statement as 10 is greater than six. 10 is greater than six. You could write a statement like mu is greater or larger than 85. And this would be a right tail test if I wrote that. Just a symbol to help you with that. That's an extra bonus um, situation. Let me show you some additional problems where we can look at some problems and see how this would actually work in practice. I'm going to bring up the book here. And we're going to look at section, we're going to look at, oops, we're going to look at this um, this kind of situation, for example, okay? It says, let me bring it up. I'm going to read number one down here, just for some clarity. It says, it has been found that the average time Okay, that's important. So we're going to underline that. The average time internet users spend online per week is, there's my is, is 18.3 hours. A random sample of 48 teenagers indicated that their mean amount of internet time per week was 20.9 hours with a population variance of 32.49. This is population variance. We're not doing the hypothesis test, okay? Just identifying the hypothesis here. At the 0 0.02 level of significance, can it be concluded that the mean time differs from this per week, okay? So what we're testing is whether it differs from it or not. Now, if you remember, differs, differs means it's different from what they claim. It doesn't specify a direction. So this is telling us that it's not equal to what they claimed, which was 18.3. So in this case, it's going to look something like this. Your null hypothesis is going to be mu equals 18.3. And then my H1 is going to be mu is not equal, it differs. And I'll show you that in the um, I'll show you that in the actual um, if I can get it to draw properly. <laughs> um, let's see if I can draw this. So here, 
we're going to have have to get it out of the box, I think. Um, I'll do it like this and I'll strike it later. This is my box, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this out. So this is gonna be my drawing here. And I'm gonna draw this. Okay, I'll annotate on the screen. This is not making sense, so I'm just gonna strike it like that. Mu is not equal to 18.3. Now, that means that this differs is going to be my, my claim that I'm testing. And because it's a two tail, because it's not equal, this becomes a two-tailed test. This becomes a two-tailed test. And that's how you would do that. That's where that claim would be, okay? I'm going to do another example here. Let's do... Um, Okay, now let's see. Let's look at number three. Let me clear this drawing. Let me clear this out. And I'm going to Stop sharing it. And share the book. Oops, wrong book. My apologies. Um, let me go to the third example here. Here's another example of what we're talking about. Okay. It says a random sample of average debt in dollars at graduation from 30 of the top 100 Pacific colleges and universities is listed below. Okay, they gave us data on the next page. We're not gonna worry about our data. Okay, we're this, they're talking about this data here. We're not gonna worry about that. We're just trying to set up the hypothesis test. So it says it says this. Is there sufficient evidence at alpha equals 0 0.01 to conclude that the population mean debt is less than eighteen thousand dollars? Okay. So is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the population mean debt is less than 18,000? Well, here, if I take us back to hypothesis testing, I'm looking for is less than. So if you see here, this is is less than. This is no equal sign, so this is an H1 symbol. And so in this case, you would set it up as follows. You would say, is there evidence at the 0 0.01 level to conclude that the average debt, we would say HO, we'd say mu. Now, 
We need this to be less than. We know that less than, because it doesn't contain an equal sign, goes with H1. So we're going to, sorry about that. We're going to continue with our, with our symbols here. We're going to continue with our symbols. And we're going to say this. We're going to say that we were looking at um, less than 18,000. So if you remember, we have the following. Let me share the screen. This is where we left off before my internet just abruptly died. Let me come back here. Uh, we're looking at number three here, a random sample of the average debt is listed below. Is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the population mean debt at graduation is less than $18,000? Now, how does that work? Well, we know that if we're doing it, that we have HO, we have H1. And so we have mu, it's less than 18,000. Remember the trick about it has to be smaller over here. Mu is less. So you want the point, the one point to face the letter that's less. Mu is less than 18,000. This points to the left. So it's a left tail task. Okay, this is a left tail test. And this happens to be the claim as well. We're testing that claim and it's a left tail. Left tailed test. Now, because we know that the other side has to be, or the other hypothesis, I should say, has to contain the other two symbols. We're going to have mu is greater than or equal to, and I'm gonna sneak an equal sign in there. Mu is greater than equal to 18,000 here. And that's how you do it. So how do you, identify a null and an alternative hypothesis by the wording in the question. How do you know which one they're giving you? By, by the wording and by the symbols in the question. Let's do one final example here. I'm going to, again, share the book um, just so we can get some other examples that we haven't looked at before. Um, I'm going to use a different okay, let's see. Okay, we're going to use let's look at this um that this one here. I'm gonna look. at this question here, number six, okay? A random sample of dollar trifecta tickets at a local racetrack paid the following amounts in dollars and cents. I don't care about the data. I'm not testing the hypothesis right now. Is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the average trifecta winnings exceed 
$50. Use alpha equals 0.10. Okay, so again, exceed. So if I'm looking at the question here is, is there enough evidence to conclude Is there enough evidence to conclude now that trifecta winnings exceed $50? Okay, now I'm gonna do something here. This is the way that this problem is actually worded, okay? And so as such, exceed means to be more than. If I exceed expectations, I'm above expectations. So the way this is worded would lead me to set it up the following way. I have HO here, I have H1 here. Um. I want to know what the average trifecta wings are. U exceeds $50. This is a right tail test, okay? Now I'm gonna do something with this in just a minute that should help you see this a bit more, but this is right tailed, okay? And we'll say that this is the claim. Okay, They're, they don't have to be the same on the same level. I could have HO as the claim. But here, if this is greater than, then again, because this has to contain the other two symbols, this is going to be less than or equal to when I do it. This is going to be mu is less than or equal to $50. Now, if I change this wording, if I change this wording and say this, is there enough evidence? Is there enough evidence to conclude that trifecta winnings are at least $50, okay? Are at least $50. Then I've created another situation here. This is a different situation. Let me show you why. Still, if I say, HO, mu, now, H1 here. If you go back and look it up, at least $50. 50 is the least, but this includes 50. This includes 50. So in this case, this becomes greater than, equal to, and I'm going to, put the, my equal underneath this. This is at least because this is greater than equal to right here. This becomes my H1 now. And my, I mean, sorry, my HO. My H1 now becomes less than. Mu is less than 50. And this becomes left tail. This is a left tail test. This is a left tail test. But my claim is actually the null hypothesis. Okay, so again, is there enough evidence to conclude that the trifecta warnings are at least 
$50. Well, if I come back to that and I go back to the slides, you look at at least, you go to the slides here. This is at least. So here you want to say, Here's the middle column. This has an equal, so this is part of the null hypothesis, okay? I hope that this brief video has helped you with some of the wording. Remember that identifying some of the wording is, uh, is key to getting your hypotheses correct. It's also key to getting your critical values if you're doing the, um, the traditional method. So spend some time with that, keep practicing it. If you have any questions, please be sure and let me know. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care, everyone. Be healthy, stay safe. I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.